bought Motorola 14 months ago, and today in New York City, we're getting our first look at the first device they built together. This is the Moto X, and it's really what happens when Google becomes a hardware manufacturer. But this story really goes back a week to Verizon's announcement of a lineup of new droids. Motorola made clear to us that Moto X is the future of the company, that it's where Motorola is headed, but it's hedging that future a little bit. Droids have a special place. They're, they go after people who are looking for a lot of power, top-end hardware specs, they're looking for phones um, that have a unique design character to them. The new phone isn't quite as angry as your average droid. I still don't know if it's called the X or the Moto X, but whatever you call it, the phone is beautiful. Its curved glass and plastic front has tiny bezels and a big bright display, and the back curves from flat edges to a slightly convex center that nestles perfectly in your palm. Nearly everything else about the phone is negotiable. You can choose how much storage you get in your Moto X. You can also choose the front panel, either black or white, there are 18 options for the back panel, which you can also engrave, plus seven for the accents, which are the ring around the camera lens and the buttons. The colors look and feel different from a woven black to a matte and rubbery gray. And if you don't like the one you pick, just send it back within two weeks and get another. Assembling phones to order like this is complicated and it takes time. So Motorola moved its operations to Fort Worth, Texas in a huge factory where it assembles all its phones. We realized that it was really critical to be able to deliver phones to people in less than five days. And so that's why we moved manufacturing. We took all of our supply chain and we made it based in Fort Worth. And there's approximately 2,000 employees that put the phones together. It's a very, it's a complicated assembly process. And, and they're working at our partner Flextronics who we do our manufacturing with. We also of course have most of our designers, engineers, most of our employees at Motorola are in America as well. And so putting our manufacturing close to our engineering is a really, really nice feedback loop for us. Buyers get to help decide what their phone looks like, but the specs themselves are left up to Google and Motorola. The two companies made a big bet. They essentially built a mid-range phone. It has a 4.7 inch 720p OLED screen in an era of five inch 1080p panels. And we had a lot of debates about what the right, what the, you know, the density of display, 1080 versus 720, what the right size is. Um, so it started with size to really find the sweet spot. And then we decided the resolution to be what we thought was ideal. We could go and make you know, a higher resolution screen, but it would just suck battery and no one would know the difference, right? Because we saw that and we knew that. The screen's a little pink to our eyes, but otherwise looks really good. The Moto X has Motorola's X8 chip, which really is little more than an off the shelf Snapdragon processor, plus a couple of additional cores. It's not a bleeding edge or even necessarily top notch processor, but it goes back to the simple message of the Moto X. It's not about what your phone can do theoretically. It's about what it does do and what you do with it. One of the things we found is, is a little bit of a curious behavior was people turning their phones off and on about 60 times a day. And so, so we developed something we think is really cool and very useful, which we call active display. It lets the user know that real basic information and it shows it sort of right on the screen. In this case, like it comes on and I can just go right up to the text message, it'll take me right to the message, so it's really fast. Part of the reason we use the, the, the AMOLED display is that we can selectively illuminate one portion of the display, which gives us a very kind of energy efficient way to, to show this. The Moto X knows when you're in a car and jumps into driving mode automatically. It knows your voice and only your voice. Just say, OK, Google now and command your phone as you please. You can make and end calls, get directions, or look up almost anything without ever needing to touch your phone or even turn it on. The phone runs nearly pure stock Android, version 4.2.2. Somehow, even though it's owned by Google, Motorola still can't get the latest version of its software. There is a clear separation between Motorola and Android, but we also, of course, have quite a bit of Google influence. It doesn't help us, per se, upgrade any faster. There's no difference in operation there than any other OEM. But our strategy does, Motorola's strategy does, which is to remove um, a lot of the customizations that have plagued Android phones for a long time and really just focus right on the core Android user experience, which we think has evolved to a great place. It, it has unlocked an opportunity for us to pursue a path that before we thought about, but really wasn't, wasn't really going to work for us at Motorola, given what our products were and what we stood for. It allowed us to design in a different way. Google's been involved with the Moto X design throughout, and there's even a program for sharing employees between the two companies. It's almost like Motorola hasn't figured out what to do with Google yet, and Google hasn't figured out how to use its new hardware arm either. 
It may not be a Google Play Edition phone, unlocked and an Android purist dream, but the Moto X is fast, smooth, and powerful. The only thing that didn't work very well was the quick launch camera. You wiggle your wrist like you're jimmying a lock, and it'll jump straight to the camera no matter what it was doing before. It's great, it just doesn't always work. The camera takes good pictures too, but it has very few features. It might be too simple. But Motorola believes in simple, in making phones that fit our lives perfectly without changing them. It believes we want phones that do what we want them to do, and they look the way we want them to look, and everything else from spec sheets to SKUs is secondary. I think two years ago the company made 45 phones. Um, we're, we're obviously down to a much smaller set, and we think it's critical to do a smaller number of things much better. At $199 on contract and available on all four major US carriers, we're gonna find out if Simple can win. Motorola is taking on the Galaxy S4, the HTC One, the iPhone 5, and even its own line of droids. Those phones all have more power and more features. Motorola is fighting fire with glow sticks here. But its glow stick is pretty, it's really easy to use, and it doesn't go out so quickly. Maybe there's something to be said for glow sticks. 